Hello there guys, um, today you are saved during this um, live cast from seeing my face. Um, today I'm getting intimate, up close and personal with my tripod so that I can demonstrate, as my hand suddenly looms into shot, I can demonstrate the uh, the different steps of this um, crochet by hopefully doing some live crocheting for you. Um, now hopefully that's not going to be too tedious and um, I'm not going to be doing massive great long rounds of the entire length of the shawl. Um, I'll just do a little bit and then turn back and do a little bit more, turn back and then do, do another. So um, I'll have a little bit of um, frogging to do when I finish this, but it will be worth it just so that you can see the counts. And basically once you've got, hi Lynette, once you've got um, the basic construction sorted and you understand how the centrepiece then mirrors itself, everything else will become a breeze. So um, hopefully this will take you through that process. And in case you're wondering, yes, uh, Sophie did manage to play with my um, with my hook. So I'm not usually that bad, but um, it was a very recent mutilation of the hook, unfortunately. So I've yet to replace that one. Hi there, Carol. Um, now you are a few um, a few seconds behind me. So if you do ask a question, please bear with me um, for everything to catch up so that I can actually see the questions and then have a chance to respond. But the first thing I'm going to do is just talk you through um, the different elements of the basic um, half round and then the elements in the central repeat. Uh, once those, as I said, once, once you've got this down, then the rest of it will become very straightforward. So if I'm teaching uh, Granny to suck eggs here, I do apologise. So we have a foundation layer, which is this lovely little... Um, chain seven row here and then that is used to create this start of the fan round or the semicircle which has 12 stitches um, crammed into the space of the seven chain. Uh, next to these fans you have, let's find one that's a bit more obvious, I thought I found one over here earlier, yes, then you've got these, um, I refer to them as pyramids or triangles where you've got three loops and then two loops and then one loop and then you join in at the tippy top to, to form that triangle shape uh, which is, is really very stunning once the whole thing has been, been blocked and shaped out. So these are the four mini loops and then you've got one large loop which is the, uh, the basis for the, the rest of the double chain if it's US terminology or trebles if it's UK terminology. Um, now the only difference in the middle um, for that counting is that we have a space let's see if I can show you that with the hook we have a space here a space here and a space here it's what forms the owl's beak if we're looking at this the other way up so here you've got the owl's beak and then you've got the um, the little feathers around their eyes as my daughter pointed out um, and those are formed around this gap and the reason we use that gap is because that's what tethers the next level of foundation stitches or foundation chains because those two sevens, um, they are um, attached in the middle of that, that gap, that space there. So everything that we're doing individually in these, these half circles, we just repeat twice. So we do it once here leave a space and then do it again this side and we're away off to the other edge. Um, once we've completed the fans, the uh, the layer, the foundation layer should be fairly straightforward. It has three mini loops of four chains and then one large loop in between the two fans of uh, seven chains. Um, there could be some confusion over which stitches to use, which is why I'm going to take you through how to actually crochet the complete um, a complete foundation round then I'll flip it and start building the um, the the 12 stitches the 11 stitches and the 10 stitches so um, I'm only going to do that over one round hopefully that won't get too boring for you um, if this is what you want to be seeing please let me know show, drop, show, <laughs> show me some love drop me a comment give me some feedback that would be great um, and if anybody's got any other questions that you want me to cover today please let me know that as well so here we have a chain seven 
and we're going to move on and do a chain four and this is really bizarre because I'm not actually looking at my hands while I'm doing this I am looking at the screen so I'm quite amazed that my hands are working as well or as coordinatedly as they are. So there's my four chain and what I'm going to do is skip one and then attach it here and I'll just pull it straight through um, into a slip stitch. If you would prefer to use um, a double crochet or a single crochet then so that would be a single crochet for US a double crochet for the UK feel free to do that it won't, won't have a, a massive impact on anything and we do that again one two three, four, and then we skip one gap and we attach in the next, oops, and this is what happens when it's live and I'm not looking. So let's try that again with me actually looking at the, uh, at my hands rather than looking at the screen. So that's, that's the two mini loops. We've got one last one to do, one, two, three, four and then we skip and we attach and we pull whoops pull the whole thing through and then we're now on to this this gap where we're going to use our seven and uh, this could be considered confusing now you've got your anchor stitch here which means this isn't this gap here isn't actually part of the fan this is simply the gap between the loop and the last stitch of the fan so what we're going to be doing is skipping one ignoring all of this center piece, ignoring this first gap after the uh, the loop, skipping one and then attaching here. But first of all I'll do my, my chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then as I say we're going to uh, come across to, to this space here. Um, or if you want to include all of the spaces that look like their stitches, you can simply count one, two, three, four, and then join in here. One, two, three, four. Right. So I'm just going to leave that there for a minute. So we've got our loop of seven. We have the three loops of four across the top. And then we have our other loop of seven. And that is what you should be seeing on each of your fans, no matter whether you're at the start of the project or at the end of the project. That is how you create your foundation row. Where you have the centre, you will have your seven, three, seven. But obviously there's no gap to, um, to go through here. So you have an immediate seven and then a, a four, a four, a four. And then you're back onto the gap with, with, the, uh, with the chain seven again. So... And that is the uh, the method for creating the foundation row. So what I'm going to do is turn my work and then start coming back again. So I'm just going to do a uh, a three three chain to give me some some movement. I'm going to pretend that I've just come off of another series of uh, small chains creating these little mini loops here and I'm going to start working on creating my 12 doubles or 12 trebles so it's doubles for the US and trebles for the UK pattern so you wrap around once put through pull through the first two loops pull through the last two loops and we're going to do that another 11 times so if you'll bear with me while I just go through that process. It's incredibly muggy here today, which means that the yarn is really sticking to my hands. So nothing is moving through as smoothly as I would like. Do any of you have any questions at all? Whilst I uh, try to get through this, uh, these 12, uh, 12 stitches as quickly as possible for you. I haven't seen any questions pop up yet, so if I've missed them, I do apologise. And then I spend a lot of my time double checking with the counting. Um, and for me, I find it easier to count these little knobbly bits um, rather than counting across the top. 
So in this case, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I just need to do a few more, or four more, to give me the 12 that I'm looking for. And inevitably I get to three and then forget where I am because usually I'm watching television or a film or having a chat while I'm crocheting. Oh, excellent. I'm glad it's clear. Good stuff. Um, so if I recount again, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that's that's the full quota. And what I'm going to do is go through these three and then come back again. So we simply anchor in. Uh, you could either use a, a double or a single in America, or you can slip stitch. And then we chain four, one, two, three, four. And then we anchor that. One, two, three, four. And we anchor again. So here you can see we've got three on the base foundation and two on the next level up. And then we would jump straight back into our next batch of 12 doubles or treble stitches. Now I'm going to turn around at this point. You would obviously keep going all the way to the end. But I will uh, turn the work. I'm sounding ever so out of breath. It's where I'm leaning around the... Uh, the camera so I do apologize if it sounds like I'm doing heavy breathing at you that's not the intention at all so um, if we were starting a row we'd start with a chain three as we always start our rows with a chain three um, and then we would treble into the top now into the top of the stitch someone was asking me about gaps of stitches which isn't really going to be very clear on this round um, or this section but it will be on the next one once we've done the loops so we'll pretend that we've just finished that that fan and now we're going to anchor chain four and then anchor and here we've now got three down to two and down to one and we're now going to join in to uh, oh, this mass of, uh, of treble or double stitches. And what we're going to be doing is actually inserting the hook, not in this gap, because that is the, that's the space between the first of the double or trebles and the previous hook. What we're going to do is we're going to insert into this point here, which is the top of that stitch. Now you can either insert the hook between the two parts of that stitch or if you prefer you can put the hook in the gap itself this really large gap um, that's a personal preference thing um, I change my mind depending on the wind I try to be consistent within a single project um, and so far for this one I've not been going into the entire gap I've been going into the top of the stitch so make sure that you've got the two sides to that stitch hooked over which isn't particularly obvious so you've got the two sides to the stitch over your hook and then pull through so that you've then got the first of your next 11 trebles and by using this gap method and by moving down from 12 to 11 to 10 um, you don't have to count so much it, it, if it makes you feel better you can but the um, the rule of diminishing returns means that by going into the gaps of the previous row you're guaranteed to get 11 and then you're guaranteed to get 10 as long as you start in the right place. And the same is true as long as you end in the right place. So we need to just recognise which is an actual stitch and which is the space between a stitch and the previous loop. So what, does that actually make sense to people? Um, I'll need to wait a little while for a response to that, but hopefully someone will come back and tell me that that last description made some sense. If not, I can uh, I can show you again. So I'll keep going round, and I will... Oh, I'm about to lose the entire shawl. Come back.
and then when I get to the end oh excellent I'm glad I'm glad that's making more sense and then as we get to the end it's a matter of recognizing when to stop um, and you can either get that recognition by counting or hopefully I'll be able to show you the difference so here is the last stitch see if I can actually get that a bit clearer for you. So this one here is the last stitch and it's joining in to the loop. So where it joins the loop, this portion here where it joins the loop is not the top of a stitch. We don't want to be inserting our hook and doing another stitch here. We want to leave that alone. In the same way that we left it alone at the beginning over here where we've joined into the previous hoop um, we do that again and we can double check that by counting and there should be all things being equal there should be 11 stitches 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 11 stitches which means that my maths has worked and all is right with the world despite the fact that it's muggy and raining it's all good and then we would continue on with more of the, um, the chain 4's but I'm going to uh, turn the work one last time so that we can move on to the final row of doubles and chain one or trebles and chain one. I'm going to try and not have everything fall off off my table here. So we start off with chain three to replicate our double or treble and then we're at Sorry about that little disconnect there. So we're starting off with a chain three to replicate our treble or our double if we're looking at US. And then we're going to do an extra chain which gives us the space between the two. And then we move on to the next stitch. Now because we've already worked one in the first stitch here, we move on to the next. And then we do our treble. And we chain one. And we move on into the top of the next stitch. And we chain one and we move on. And in the same way, that we went down one number of stitches between rows last time, we will do the same this time because again we are working in the gaps so there will always be one less. This is one of the things that caused me irritation um, with the original virus shawl uh, was the fact that you were trying to work between stitches and then you were working on top of a stitch and it was really horrible to, uh, to keep that count flowing nicely. So uh, this is why I, I recalculated everything and uh, tried to make it a little bit more beginner friendly. Hopefully that's worked for you guys. Um, it took quite a lot of effort to, uh, to get the pattern written um, over and above the, the original stick drawing. But I think it was worth the, uh, the time that I put into it. And certainly people seem to be very excited about the, um, the alternate option there for them at least. Uh, let's see. And this is again where we're coming towards the end. So we're going to do one more here and then this is the, uh, the anchoring stitch. And unlike previously, well, we'll just double check that count. So it should be 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Excellent. I do always include the chain one on the end of this fan and then we anchor as we've been anchoring everything else, but we're not going to do um, a chain four at this point. We're literally anchoring and then moving straight on into our next round of trebles. Now, I don't have any more trebles to continue working into, but if I did, that's where I would, would keep going with the next fan. Um, now, hopefully, all of that has made sense, and you've seen we've created the triangle pattern here, and we've created a complete fan from our 12, 11 and 10 plus ones um, across the top here. If all you remember about this pattern is the 12, 11, 10, then you're good to go. You've got your four, so you've got your three, your two and your one. And it is just a repetition of those numbers time after time, round after round. Um, so hopefully all of that will have helped you um, understand the pattern and see where you're supposed to be picking various bits and pieces up. Um, while I take a breath, does anybody have any other questions that you want me to 
to look at answering today if that's at all possible for you. Oh, and one other thing. Um, I've noticed that different people store their hook in different ways. This is absolutely nothing to do with the pattern and just me being nosy now. Um, and I don't really do a lot with my hook once I've finished um, working for the day. I just kind of fold everything up and uh, roll it away and keep it out of Sophie's um, clutches. Um, but I've seen other people who do complicated things with their hooks and I was just wondering what do you guys do with your hooks when you're putting your work away for the evening? Um, when you've, when you've finished your crochet, how do you actually store your projects? Um, so, so that's just, just something that I'm a little bit curious about. Uh, <laughs> no real reason other than I'm nosy. But um, yes, it would be interesting to see what people do with their different projects. I don't see any other questions at the minute. So I'm going to assume that uh, you're all clear on that process. If not, I can record a separate video that isn't live, which means you don't get my heavy breathing down the camera and um, I can take shots from different angles and uh, make sure that everything is, is nice and uh, steady in, in the case of uh, fabric falling off of, uh, off of the table and so forth. And uh, we don't have any of those silly little hiccups. But for now, I think that's enough and I will uh, catch up with you guys probably not over the weekend I'll leave you to to carry on crocheting over the weekend at your own pace and then if you've got any questions that come up over the weekend please let me know um, and I will cover them all if I need to do a longer uh, live stream on Monday then I'll do so that's not a problem and um, I will speak to you guys later on next week so have a great weekend all and I'll see you soon bye for now <laughs>